Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I am a consultant cardiologist in York Hospital. And uh, um, over the past few weeks, uh, uh, a few of my friends on, um, on some of the Facebook groups have asked me, what is the connection between high blood pressure and ectopic beats? Uh, PVCs, PACs. And so um, I thought I'd do a quick video. It's quite late at night at the moment. It's about, I think, midnight. Uh, but I thought I'd do a quick video just because I'd promised I'd try and answer this question. Now, the first thing to try and understand is um, uh, blood pressure, okay? So if the heart, the heart is a, basically a pump, okay? And it's trying to pump blood out. And if the resistance to the blood being pumped out is increased, then that causes a high pressure. So the heart has to generate an even higher pressure to get the blood out. Now, the analogy could be if you are in the garden and you have your hose pipe, which is attached to the tap, okay? The tap is pushing blood out, uh, pushing water out. The hose pipe acts as a conduit to let the water come out. Now, if someone, narrows the hose pipe, then to try and get the water out, you need more pressure on the tap, that you need to turn the tap on a bit more, so the pressure increases, okay? Um, now, if there is a, um, uh, there is resistance to flow of blood from the left heart, I, the heart is, four chambers, okay? You have the atria at the top, and then you have the bottom two chambers, which are called the ventricles. There is the right ventricle, which pushes blood up to the lungs. The blood collects the oxygen. And then from there, the blood comes to the left atrium. And from the left atrium, it goes to the left ventricle. And then the left ventricle pushes the blood all around the body. So if there is an increased pressure, um, in the rest of the body, uh, then that causes systemic high blood pressure, okay? Because the left heart is pushing blood around the whole of the system. So it's called systemic high blood pressure if there's an increased pressure. If there is increased pressure on the right side of the heart, then that is called pulmonary high blood pressure or pulmonary hypertension because the right heart is pumping blood to the lungs. So if the pressure is increased um, on the right heart, if the pressure is increased in the lungs, i.e. if you have bad lungs, the right heart has to work harder and generate a higher pressure. That's called pulmonary hypertension. Um, so both systemic hypertension and pulmonary hypertension will cause an increase in ectopic heartbeats. And I will explain why. Uh, but in essence, what it's important to realize is that any kind of lung condition, okay, so if you have a pneumonia, if you have COPD, if you have emphysema, if you smoke, um, if you have bronchiectasis, anything that causes pulmonary fibrosis, if you have anything bad happening in your lungs, then that can cause a much higher pressure for the right heart to pump against and that is called pulmonary hypertension, and that can cause ectopic. Similarly, if you have a problem with the left side of the heart, i.e. anything that the left heart is pumping against, then that can cause ectopics as well, and that is called systemic hypertension, and causes for systemic hypertension can be uh, narrowing in your um, a kidney arteries called renal artery stenosis. It can just be narrowing of the arteries all over because of age or high cholesterol or diabetes. But anything that causes a narrowing of the blood vessels will cause high blood pressure, okay? So, We've established that both pulmonary hypertension and systemic hypertension uh, put more pressure on the heart. Uh, the heart has to work harder and therefore can cause ectopics. Now, the, the, what I wanted to try and explain to you is why you get the ectopics. Now, what happens is, for example, um, you have your left heart, okay? Uh, so the left heart now is pumping blood, okay? And because the pressure that it's pumping against is raised, the pressure in the cavity of the left ventricle has to be much higher uh, to try and get the blood out. So now when the blood is coming from the lungs into the left heart, it has to go through the left atrium. And from the left atrium, it goes into the left ventricle. Now, the way it works is that the 
first part of the blood goes straight through. The left atrium doesn't do anything. It just acts as a conduit. Okay. And then towards the end, what happens is the left atrium contracts and pushes a bit more blood in the heart, and that generates a more effective contraction. What happens in uh, hypertension is that the pressure is already high in the left ventricle. So the passive blood, which just should just go straight through, doesn't go in as easily because the pressure is already high. So the blood can't just flow through. And there is a greater dependence on the atrial contraction towards the end to push the blood in. And that means that the atria has to work harder and harder to try and get the blood in. And as the atria gets harder, uh, sorry, as the atria works harder, it stretches because it's a thin walled object. It's a thin walled chamber. And as it stretches, it increases its propensity to have premature atrial complexes because of the stretch that happens in the left atrium. And the same thing happens in the right atrium. And that is why we see so many people who have lung disease develop lots of atrial ectopics and then eventually develop atrial fibrillation. Very, you will see a lot of people with COPD, with emphysema, um, develop atrial fibrillation uh, and they often get a lot of atrial ectopics. Similarly, with high blood pressure as well, you do get an increased number of ectopics, and then eventually a lot of people go into atrial fibrillation. And the secret really is to just try and um, keep the blood pressure low wherever possible. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to rush and start taking tablets. For a lot of people, the reasons are uh, lifestyle related. So if you have, uh, if you're smoking, please stop smoking because undoubtedly the more you smoke, the more you make your lungs worse, the more the pressure on the right side of the heart increases, the more um, the atria has to work and the more the atria will stretch and the more you will get ectopics and eventually you will get atrial fibrillation. So smoking is really bad. Similarly, anything that increases your blood pressure, stress, diabetes, all these things are bad. Um, and uh, it's important just to try and be cognizant of these and monitor your lifestyle and make modifications to your lifestyle to reduce the likelihood of this happening. Now, if you have a very high blood pressure, then it's obviously a very good idea to have this treated. It's also important to bear in mind that I think that ectopics are largely due to a lot of inflammation. And there are certain things that will cause inflammation cause high blood pressure and also cause ectopics, i.e. the high blood pressure isn't causing the ectopics. It's the inflammation within the body that is causing both the blood pressure to go up and the ectopics to happen. And these conditions are things like sleep apnea, diabetes, um, uh, stress, and it's important to pay attention to this. So that, to my mind, is the mechanism behind why people with high blood pressure often complain of ectopics. The only thing you can do is to try and control your blood pressure as best as you can and to try and lead a good lifestyle. And hopefully, uh, that should calm the ectopics down. The only other thing I'd like to say is magnesium often help, helps in this setting as well. So I hope this was helpful. And, um, and many thanks once again for listening. I'm really grateful for all the comments I get. I'm really grateful for the subscribers. I would dearly like to have more subscribers. I promised myself that I'd like to try and get 3,000 subscribers by the end of the year. At the moment, I'm lagging on 1,100. So if you could share my video, I'd be very grateful. If you could, please um, uh, like it. I would be really grateful. It's just, um, it's something I'm really passionate about. It's something I'm really committed to doing. Uh, and, and having, you know, lots of comments, having um, some feedback is really good motivation. So I'm really grateful to all of you. And I, it's quite late at night. So if you're watching this, um, thanks for keeping it. Thanks for staying up and watching me uh, uh, when you could be getting some nice sleep. Um, now, if you want to get in touch with me, you can do so through my Facebook page. Um, I'm also on Twitter. But the best way to get in touch with me is to send me a message through my website, uh, www.yourcardiology.co.uk. And you can ring my secretary, Jeanette, who's based at York Hospital on 01904 725811. Thank you very much. Good night.